Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Lohner, just statewide news service, jbstickfilly.com, and now, columnist for the Jewish Press. I'm having a lot of fun doing all three assignments, and my column in the Jewish Press is uh, called, talks about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. But someone who does relate to the Jewish community is our guest today, uh, Carmela Mantello. She is now the president of the Choice City Council. So welcome back to the Jewish View. You were here before under a different title, but welcome back to the Jewish View. <laughs> Shalom, and thank you for inviting me, and well, it's, it's nice to be here. You're doing wonderful work. Well, thanks. Well, really how's are. Troy doing? That's the big question. <laughs> um, you know, I love Troy, as you yes. know. I've, I've lived there my whole life, and, you know, my mom and dad still live in Troy, so we're generational. My dad grew up in South Troy, and I'm raising a family in Troy, so um, Troy's fantastic uh, in terms of the love, the uniqueness, the downtown is on a resurgence. Yes. It's, yeah, it's truly. Space, on a boom now you there, live in the Sickaway neighborhood, right? I live in the Sickaway neighborhood, which is uh, Hoosick Street area, right. um, which I avoid at all costs. <laughs> Hoosick Street is, is a mess. Well, we have um, Temple Bethel on Hoosick Street. It's so. right around the corner from my house. Oh, okay, and yeah. uh, I love New York pizza. That's right. My son is uh, a partner oh. of Island. No, just because he eats so much pizza he there. <laughs> <laughs> he invests. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's an investor. Um, but, I, yes. but you know, the Lansingburg area, mm -hmm. I was surprised that the county executive lives in the Lansingburg yeah. area. But you know, what's going on there? It seems like that place is like one neighborhood falling apart. Yeah. But well, other people Lansingburg? say it's, yeah, but other yeah. people say it's not. I mean, you hear about a fire, you hear about the, the water, uh, the pipes breaking, yeah. you hear about not just fires, but burglaries and people being beat up. and. I mean, right. it's, I mean, if you listen to the media, which I don't. Uh, you are the media. You are the media. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. But, I, <laughs> but the mainstream media. Right. No, I, you know, you would think that everything is going to hell in a handbasket. Well, a couple things. As, as the rabbi mentioned, um, as rabbi mentioned, that the downtown is being revitalized. Yes, yes. And, you know, tens of millions of dollars from 10, 15 years ago. It didn't, it didn't happen overnight. We need to take that momentum and bring it to the neighborhoods, whether it be North Central, whether it be Lansingburg or South Troy, who have really been hard hit by just uh, the economic times and um, transients, unfortunately, are moving into Lansingburg and South Troy. And unfortunately, some of those folks don't take pride in their neighborhood. Uh, we have a number of vacant buildings, over 600 vacant buildings. Um, you know, the zombie property effort with the Attorney General and the Governor and others. And we have a land bank. Hopefully, we'll try to get our neighborhoods back on track. But once again, um, we need a government that's proactive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think over the last four or five years, you know, we've seen a government that's been reactive. We've seen Lansingburg, where I actually grew up. Uh, I'm an alumni of Lansingburg High School. And, you know, my dad, retired police officer, when he was a cop, he would drop me north Lansingburg and we would walk. 10, 15 blocks, hang out with our friends, not be afraid to walk in the dark. Heck, now people are afraid in certain parts in the Berg and in North Central to walk during the day. Mm. And so walk during the day, not yeah. just at night. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we don't want fear mongering, but certainly Lansingburg um, has really taken a toll. However, um, we have neighborhood associations in Lansingburg and South Troy and in North Central who are really committed to bring back our neighborhoods. It's been a mantra, it's been a priority of the yeah. city council. Um, we just approved recently over 12 properties to be demolished. Um, they're non-rehabable. Um, so we're all for rehab. So how much does it cost to demolish a house? Um, over a million dollars. Really? So you're talking for 12 properties, no, 1.1. No, no, each one. property. Each property, it depends on the property, on the asbestos, things like that. But it's about 100000 like that. But you're talking 100 to, yeah. The cost of the home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, sometimes more than more the cost. Than, more than the cost. cost but, of the home. 
you know, but it's a concentrated effort. Um, you know, it's code enforcement, it's our police force, it's our fire department, it's the city council, the administration, all working together. And Lansingburg, North Central, and South Troy need to be targeted areas block by block, and we can do this, yeah. but it's going to take time. How come other and, administrations uh, haven't been able to do this? I think it's been a matter of priority, Mark. I really do. Um, if you look at the downtown, I mean, look at the downtown 10, 15 years ago. It was nowhere where it is today. And that was a concentrated effort of not just money, but the desire and the proactiveness of our police force and others to merge our efforts and really tackle the growing issues. You know, it's just part of the times also. I mean, I don't know if maybe you can answer, but you know, look, I know Brooklyn more than, I think we live there, my kids live there, and all of a sudden it's like the place to be. And exactly. 30, 40 years ago, was, Rabbi, you're taking me to pray because you know, that's <laughs> our headquarters. You're trying to kill me over <laughs> here, like you say, walk down a right. bad street, right. and now it's hoo ha, you can't even buy, buy a garage for a million dollars. So, you know, the same it thing with happen. Troy, it could, you know, sure. but that's what I'm saying, maybe the, the good people, you know, that people have jobs. Yes. We'll just keep moving in. That's what happened in Brooklyn and saying, hey, this is a nice place to be. It's near the river. Sure. I mean, you surely have a resource there. People always like me being near the right. water. Well, and as you know, the waterfront is yes. very near and dear to my heart. Uh, my days at the Greenway, Albany to New York City, kayaking, Albany to New York City, and you know, them being you afforded. All the way I here. did. I did. A hundred, hundred and fifty approximately miles. miles. It yeah. took ten days. Really, um, really it was the, an absolute thrill of the lifetime. I mean, if you've never done it, put it on your bucket list to really. see the water. I tell my wife, she may take me there. <laughs> there you go. Even really. if you go for a day or two, but there's kayak trips that people will set up for you, and you know they'll chart it out so you can go with obviously the the channel and right. the current and it's it's just a magical magical trip i mean oh each God. section of the hudson river which really is a national treasure right in our backyard and you know we take it for granted sometimes but to be on the hudson river for 10 days and to see the municipalities from the water yep. in a kayak yep. is something very very special and then I was afforded to go to the canal system and oversee the canal, and I kayak the canal through some of the locks. Mm -hmm. And that well, certainly is, um, I only did probably three or four locks on the Champlain, yeah. on the Champlain. So, you know, there's so much uh, that we have to appreciate in Troy, in the capital region. And once again, we need to remember to not take that for granted and take advantage of these natural resources. But Troy's waterfront is approximately 78 miles, what seven to eight miles Which long, the waterfront, Troy's. Troy's, Troy's. That's and a lot. It is, yeah. and we don't have 77 to contend with, and like Albany. And you don't have oil tanks to contend with. Well, um, you not oil tanks, no. um, but we have commercial shipping happening up and down the, uh, the, the river, which is a huge plus. No, but but, but we don't have the oil tanks. We have tanks restaurants yet. on yes. the waterfront. We do, I and mean, we can have more. And that goes back to what you were saying yeah. about Brooklyn, Rabbi, is, you know, Troy has the potential to really capitalize on the waterfront, on just the uniqueness, the character, the architecture, the history, the home of Uncle Sam. I mean, we have so much, yeah. and it's really targeting neighborhoods and really concentrating. You know, you, you know Mark, I really, because we're on the Jewish view, that yeah, we have, I mean, you talk about Beth El, but there are three synagogues, and one of them is Beth Tefilla on 82 River Street, and Roll Label Morrison is in charge of these, the president. And he went out there 30 years ago, and it's like almost incredible when I'm listening to you, because, like, listen, you know, 30 years ago, Troy was really a the dump. And, you know, now it's all of a sudden become the place to be. And the Rebbe told them, I mean, he has such foresight. You're yeah. talking with someone who has prophecy. He says there's a whole world in Troy. Oh, yeah. And people, even the other people, say, well, what are you talking about? It's a right. dump. You know? All right, the Rebbe said it. And now, you know, we don't yeah. have that vision. And, you know, it's like what yes. you're saying is just that vision. Now you could really see it, yep. that it's become a really place to be. Yeah, and, you know, just take that momentum downtown 
and spread it to the neighborhoods and it can happen and it yeah. goes back to the old oh we can't do it i mean so you know some people do like to be naysayers we have so much potential in this city and if we can do it downtown which you said 20 30 years ago the atrium killed the downtown everybody was going to our malls now everybody wants to be in a walkable downtown we need to spread that momentum to North Central, to Lansingburg, to South Troy. We can do it, and we have incredible, incredible potential. Well, we and you're repurposing the Uncle Sam mm -hmm. atrium. You're repurposing it. You've got yeah. the Department of Labor in there. You mm -hmm. have other uh, stores in there yeah, that are not well, just even people yeah. in commercial. We know our friend is South Rosenblum, and he bought a... Yes, the Troy Record. Uh, yeah, and now he's yeah. making it to what, apartments or condos. Whatever. Yes, just he people is. And people are oh, yeah. You know, Seth? To, um, I don't, but I will meet him Thursdays, the grand uh, groundbreaking uh, oh, the for Troy the Rackers. former Troy Records. So it's perfect oh, really? timing. Thursday, yeah. What time? yeah. Thursday at 1030. Okay. Um, so they'll break ground and Mark, you uh, have to be there. Oh, yeah. Mark's a reporter on the <laughs> I'll bring my camera. See that? And Mark will be there. Well, hopefully and Seth will come on the show. And, and that would be yeah. great. That yeah, would be a, a great guest. Too, I will. I, I wanted to also let yes. people know that you're a board member at Lakes to Locks Passage. I am. And tell us what Lakes to Locks Passage yeah, is. I mean, it sounds sure. like I know what it is, but tell uh, us. I'm what sure it is. you know what it is, <laughs> Mark, but it extends all the way from the Canadian border all the way down through Troy and uh, almost into the Hudson River Valley. It ends where the Champlain Canal begins. So right around the Federal Lock in Troy, which the 100th anniversary of the Federal Lock of the Army Corps, which is located right in Troy, little history there, we're um, actually celebrating that uh, the beginning of August, the 100th uh -huh. anniversary. But back to Lakes the Locks, it's an organization comprised of all of the counties that border the Hudson River going up the Champlain Canal. And it's essentially, it's an organization, all volunteers, but once again, an organization much like the Erie Canal National Heritage Corridor, where it's all about interpreting, marketing, the significance of the cultural, historical resources along the Champlain Canal. So it's not just and the New York uh, counties, it's the Vermont counties that's, also. That's correct. They okay. partner with many of the Vermont counties and we go all uh, we go all the way up to the Canadian border, but right, it's but all about. Right, but you don't go as far down as Massachusetts. That's correct. So it's only Vermont. That's and correct. Bennington. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, just let you just to let the viewers know that you were on your Facebook page when you heard about this 100 communities with the worst zombie home problems that can apply for the funds. Your f immediate reaction was, maybe Troy can get some of this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and any and all uh, grants that are available, we are there. Uh, we applied for the $10 million downtown revitalization right. initiative. We're one of the 100 communities, as I mentioned earlier. We have a number of zombie properties not, right, in the you, city. But you have Detroit. been approved as one of the 100 communities? We are. We're one of the eligible communities. Now we have to apply oh. for the funding. Okay. And so they listed Troy as one of the communities. Okay. So now what I'm saying is, let's apply for the maximum sure. amount, yeah. try to get some of these dollars to address sure. you know, 600 out. blighted it's buildings. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dollars, lot. Right? Absolutely. Now, yeah. who rep who's in the Senate represents Troy, Neil Breslin. Right? Uh, we have two. We have Senator Marcion, mm -hmm. who okay. has a sliver. She has actually North Lansingburg, oh, she does. which she mentioned earlier. So a tough, tough district. Um, and then the majority is Senator Breslin, and then Assemblyman McDonald, Assemblyman McLaughlin, share it in well, the Assembly. Well, you'll see how effective Senator Breslin could be <laughs> in the Senate minority. Well, you know, <laughs> they create partnerships, and hopefully November we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Well, you're hoping the Republicans stay in control, <laughs> That would be a good you? thing. That would be a good thing, Mark, you, yes. You know, full disclosure, you do work full for, disclosure. I do for work the state for the Senate. Senate. I do. For I Senator do. Venditto, who's a long Island Long Republican, Island. Yes. new. new yes, one, yeah. very young, mid 30s. Well, I don't uh, mean he's new. Yes, I mean he's, he's new a to freshman. The Senate. Both, both. <laughs> he's a freshman and he's new. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of the youngest. Yes, yeah, he, is. he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you do for the Senate? I'm an analyst, so I work on legislation, resolutions, much of 
what I did many years ago before I uh, ended up going over to uh, the Canal Corporation, the Hudson River Valley Greenway. And so. where did you do that? When you um, were? I worked for the State Senate back in the for late who? 80s and for during who? the 90s. A Westchester senator. Yeah. Name? Oh, Nick Spano. Nick Spano? Nick Spano. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Mark's Who's been around for two years. I oh, see that. Okay. <laughs> but the other thing is, Nick Spano went, spent some time behind bars. He's one of those, uh, 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 what do they call it? Legislative. Uh, bad apples. Bad apples, yes. Legislative bad apples. But that's okay. His brother is uh, He's Mayor of Yonkers. And, yes, Mike you know, Spano, former assemblyman. Yes. But uh, Nick job. is back lobbying. Yeah. He doesn't He's go away. He's working hard. Yes. <laughs> well, He's hardly working, working hard. right? No, no, no. <laughs> but anyhow, I, when you're, <laughs> you're saying, why are you saying all this? <laughs> uh, Troy City Council President. Yes. Is this a dream job for you? Uh, it's, this, it's, it's, it's an yeah. honor um, <laughs> yes. to give back to are your you community. The dream? I, I am living the dream okay. every day of my <laughs> life, every minute, Mark. Uh, you know, it's, it's a dream job when you talk about um, giving back to your community. And I have so many years in public service, and I also was in the private sector for three and a half years, but I am born and raised in public service. You know, my mom and dad, my mom worked for a hospital, my dad, a police officer. And I think it's, it's in my heart, it's in my blood. And, um, you know, that one thank you can get rid of the 10 or 15 you know, naysayers in one day, and just that one thank you for a recycling bin or a code enforcement issue that you addressed, or even getting a, a pothole where people are curving around the pothole and driving up on somebody's lawn to avoid it. I mean, those are the issues, and to be able and to be afforded, um, and I'm very honored and humbled that the people of Troy elected me as the top vote getter um, to be their representative and to have a new majority. I have a majority of five other colleagues, and from day one, we're doing more with less. We cut our budget in the city council. Uh, we hired an independent auditor. It was the first time in years uh, that the council took the bull by the horns. We're facing, as you know, the state comptroller mm -hmm. has warned us about our finances. We could end the year with a deficit, two to three million dollars. Yeah, um, so it's our job to hold the administration and the mayor accountable. We've done that from day one, but at the same time, we're partnering and we understand the people of Troy, they don't want to hear the bickering. They don't want to hear the Republican, Democrat. They just want to see their government work for the people. Now we had the mayor of Troy on. Great. And uh, he was a blank, not enrolled in any party, and his sister's a Republican, and he chose to be a Democrat. And I asked yeah. him why. And he said, well, because the enrollment, uh, you know, there are more Democrats He's than no Republicans. He's no dummy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're running. But, I mean, he just, I, I don't think the label, the party label matters to him. And I think the expression, there's no Democrat or Republican way to pave roads or remove snow, really takes, uh, embodies him. Yeah. And what he, well, how, how does he it work, it? though, in Troy? You say he's a president. Was that an elected official? Um, I am. Yep. How it works is uh, she's elected to the council. A, correct. And a, the fact that you got the most votes, you right. become president. president. Correct. That's how it works. You have um, a number of people run at large, right. and as you know, last year it was fairly complicated because the Democrats had the third faction, so we had like twelve people running for, how many uh, for three seats. Um, and it narrowed down to nine people eventually, but um, I was able to get the top votes, including overtopping the mayor. I got more votes than yeah. the mayor. And that's um, amazing, that, you know, and, and the fact that you didn't want to run for mayor, right. maybe you're thinking you should have. <laughs> Some people wanted me to. Everything's timing and um, the party. Uh, you know, they wanted a particular person. I could have primary, but quite frankly, I think it would have gotten just really bloody, really nasty. I don't think it would have been for the benefit of the people of Troy. So I took a step back. I threw my hat in the ring to run well, for council at large. Now the party is yeah. licking their wounds that they don't have a Republican <laughs> in the city hall, don't, aren't they? Well, you know, and the other thing, a lot of people know. Um, uh, I'm also a little rebellious at times. I mean, 
you know, we all know there's policy and politics, right. and I truly believe if you want to be an effective leader, you have to know how to distinguish the two. And uh, you can't play politics all the time. Sometimes political parties want you to. Um, but you have to know enough when to say, this is policy, which is 98% of the time, and then there's 2% politics. So well, I know. could see the day after Election Day last year, you were probably going, no, 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 no. I could have been there. I would never do that, Mark. I would never do that, Mark. <laughs> Listen, you bite your tongue. <laughs> you know, you should, but inside, you were probably. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and so many people, you know, had, had said that. But, <laughs> you know, uh, things happen for a reason. Yes, they do. I, I, I truly that. believe that. I always and, say that. Yes. Uh, you know, even me here today. Um, <laughs> I, I, for I, a reason. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Reason. Yes. Right. But I just yes. wanted to, so uh, we should say Jim Gordon ran for mayor, yes. and uh, he was a former councilman at the time. But anyway, uh, did you find it tough running against Rodney Wiltshire? Um, Rodney ended up running for mayor, so right. he stepped out. He had to relinquish his council president. Okay. Um, you know that the mayor's race was a probably one of the most vicious personal races I've seen in my lifetime. And even though I'm only, um, you know, 25 years old, yeah, I feel yeah, like I've been around for. Uh, so many years, but I started at such a young age. Yes. Um, I, I feel like I've seen so much in politics, and even being in the state, mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen it as personal as it did this last year in Troy. Um, so I am hoping moving in the future, you know, it sounds naive, but, um, you know, people really need to respect people's personal yeah, cause, lives. Yeah, because Madden yeah. and Will Try are both Democrats. Correct. And they and ran in a primary, right. and Will Try got pretty badly. He did, yeah. he did. And, you know, then Matt and Gordon, that, that got very vicious. You know, but saying that, um, you know, running positive races have something to say for themselves. I believe in them. And, you so know. So can you get a, I mean, mm -hmm. you're good friends with Kathy Jimino, the county executive, and I believe you're good friends with her. Friends, friends, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, Kathy, I, I consider one of my okay. mentors okay. Uh, at a young age. Yeah. And then, but her brother is mm -hmm. now the uh, head of at City Hall. He's the mayor. So, are you getting along? It's tricky. Uh, it's tricky. And you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I threw it out there. If you recall, um, each of the surrounding counties by Schenectady County received some of the casino funds. Um, from the licensing, you're talking a one shot to the tune of close to a million dollars for Rensselaer County alone. So I threw it out there, um, you know, spaghetti on a wall, uh, we're facing a, a financial crisis, and I threw it out there, maybe uh, split the close to million uh, to one million dollars between the municipalities, like you do the sales tax, the county sales tax, and maybe split those monies, and Troy might be able to receive some of those funds. And the county exec immediately shot it down. Um, you know, but the mayor, who you know, I I think needs to remember sometimes that. Um, he's representing the city of Troy, actually defended the county exec's decision about that. So that was a little tricky. I think he, he could have played that one a little differently because, you know, our job, no matter what, is to represent the people of Troy right. and to get every penny, every dollar to, um, you know, relieve whatever burden we can relieve on the taxpayers of the city. You know, you're talking about the budget, though, but it's interesting. I did ask the mayor this also. In the cause of the revitalization of Troy, you'd yeah. think that uh, there would be more money flowing I in. I know. I know. And, you know, it's, um, you know, the revitalization's happening downtown, and um, we're seeing a little bit of an uptick in, in terms of uh, the property tax and things like that, but um, in terms of the, the whole of the city, uh, it's not having as huge an impact. Um, you know, we're seeing a little bit of an economic boost, but it's indirect. It's to the restaurants, to the tourism efforts, and, you know, to the businesses. Um, but in terms of the direct impact to the city budget, 
it, it's not as substantial as you would imagine, you know, because right now our neighborhoods need that influx. We need to see more homeowners, our census uh, drop down a little bit again. So, you know, things like that are property. Live in Troy? Uh, oh. We were over 50. We just hit a little below 50 this this last round. So. Mm. You know, so it's a slow process. It's, it, it is. It up. takes yes, time. It, it does. It does. And you know, I'm optimistic. Uh, I didn't leave Troy. Um, had opportunities. It, it's my hometown, and mm -hmm. you know, I uh, I'm just honored to to be uh, head of the council in a period where mm -hmm. we can have an impact on yeah. the future. And you think you can make an impact? Absolutely. Can you do, yeah. see, you, you had three years with Barton and LaJuda, so you had that right. private sector experience. Can you get more uh, cooperation from private, from the private sector, whether it's for naming rights? I mean, you don't necessarily need to call that atrium the Uncle Sam atrium. Right. Maybe that could be another whether a Troy Record Center, right. we have the Times Union Center, maybe sure. it could be, you know, is there a way of working something out where you can bring in more money by naming rights on some of the buildings? Absolutely. Um, we, when we hire the independent auditor that I mentioned, uh, we charge this auditing firm, independent, non-political, um, to come up with a corrective action plan, which we're required by law um, under the New York State Comptroller's audit. So we had to come up with this cap, it's called, corrective action plan. What we asked the outside auditor was to look at just that, innovative ways to not only um, raise money, but partnerships and public-private partnerships. And one monument square, you probably heard, an incredible parcel on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, uh, the uh, Kirchhoff company pulled out of that, or fortunately, because they really did substantially change their original proposal. So it might have, you know, been a blessing in disguise to allow us to develop a new RFP that captures the water farm, more public access, and potentially more of a public-private partnership. City Hall, we're right now on the floor. We're leasing City Hall mm -hmm. over $350,000 a year. Well, we've been there already uh, since, uh, my gosh, 2011. So you're talking five years. Mm -hmm. That's over $1.5 million. Could we develop a public-private partnership, have a multi-use type of development at One Monument Square? Sure. So it's in um, the Headley building? So Correct, so on the, the fifth floor. So on there the is a floor. Mr. Headley? Um, yes, uh, but he, he, he has used to own retired. A, he own, yes. used to own a car the dealership. The car dealership, right. which is right next door to the Headley building. So um, I'm saying, you know, yeah. couldn't he do something in terms of you know, uh, doing uh, having his name on some of the buildings and give back in, in that way, he'd be giving back yeah. some of that money back to the yeah. city. He's retired somewhat, I'm but about the family, yeah, but just you know, the, the absolutely, yeah. and you know, and that's one of the ideas mentioned. Okay, how can we share services more? How can we? Um, you know, we have a number of property that's tax exempt, whether it be RPI, Emma Willard, Hudson Valley. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, can we create a better partnership, which has been talked about for years? Well, guess what? Other municipalities have. Stephanie Miner has done great work up in Syracuse. We can actually look at other municipalities on things that they've done, whether it be naming rights, whether it be sharing services. And I've traveled across the state, mm -hmm. so I know some of the opportunities mm -hmm. that are present that we're not capitalizing on. And, and con Conference of Mayors might be able yes. to be helpful, not just to the mayor, but you too, because they know Absolutely. that they're coming. Council, city council people yes. who do come to the yes. mayors because uh, they say other municipal officials right. at the end of their title. <laughs> yeah, it's mayors <laughs> and somebody had said, well, why is Carmela there? Well, there's a lot of mm -hmm. local officials right. who aren't mayors who are part of NICOM. And yes. I wanted to, yes. uh, you know, I, in Albany, uh, Mayor Sheehan is asking mm -hmm. like Albany Med to give yeah. tax pilot money yep. back to the city because the hospitals are tax exempt. Yes. Maybe you could do that. I know the St. Peter's group Absolutely, has uh, St. Yes. Mary's or whatever yes. used to be up in yes. 
Samaritan. Yep. Okay. Samaritan, St. Mary's right. have all become part of Saint the Peter's foundation of St. Peter's Health Partners. So couldn't um, you like petition them to do what Albany Med's doing for Albany? For absolutely. City Albany? Absolutely. And it doesn't hurt to ask and right. we really haven't yet and you know, we need to I'm develop to these. There you go. <laughs> Come on in, Mark. Come yeah, on he's in. He's the rabbi <laughs> over here. I'm mean, asking for donations over here. That's my job, asking for donations. Well, let me ask you. We, yes. since we're running out of time, is there anything we didn't know enough to ask you about that you'd like to bring up and mention because we didn't know enough to ask you? No, just, you know, on a final note, um, you know, Troy has incredible potential. Um, we need to think out of the box. We need to be more proactive. Uh, the city council, we're going to continue moving in that direction. And we're going to show the people of our state that Troy truly can be the greatest city in our state. Very okay. good. On that the note, it's a good final. It's a good sweet note. <laughs> the Collar <laughs> City. Yes. That's city. right. That you're doing great work. Continue thank with you. great success. Thank with you. What you're Continued doing success. Thank you. And thank you for you're the welcome. invitation. Thank you.